Guys, many things in Ghana today will depress you. Trust me. And many of these things are totally out of your control. Like fear of price, like the size of King K and whatnot. Now some of the things will make you cry. Others will drive you crazy. But the choice is always yours. For me, my coping mechanism is to satirize things. Look at the fun side of things, right? And laugh over some, act on those I can, and those I can't do anything about, I do just that. Nothing. Now problem, it never did finish. So I want to beg all the party accommodicators who are also suffering from a malfunctioning economy, but see people who use satire to diffuse tension as a threat to whatever. I beg you, allow us to express ourselves. I have seen some of your messages. Take it easy. It's not that deep, all right? It's not that deep. So I will show you guys some stuff that is depressing on today's show. And then I will share with you some antidepressants as well. First, let me tell you a very short story. I went to the fuel station and I asked for 300 Ghana CDs. The guy gave me 200. Already, the thing I was paying, it was paining me. So when he left it at 200, I didn't say anything. I was just looking at the gauge and I was like, hey, 200 Ghana CDs and do baby. And, and this guy was like, oh, Caleb Kuda. And he called his wife, oh, you know, Caleb Kuda. I said, 200 and do baby. And another guy came to say, oh, we bring here about 300. I would need about 300 Ghana cities to fill my tank. And I shouted, hey! Then the other guy, he said, boss, who fuey me salary? Ladies and gentlemen, that is when I started the engine. Tang, 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 tang. <laughs> and I drove off. This is Backpage on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. The show is sponsored by Bell Children. When everyone is a winner, Bell makes us taste of originality. Yeah, my name is Caleb. I want you to take a look at this. Per, per the little calculations and stuff that I've done, I would be able to save more than 500 pounds in a month. Hey. And so then comparing 500 pounds to Ghana cities. You know, you are hitting around 4,500, let's say 5,000 a month. That means that the house there, you build it before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, you. Now, listening to this was very depressing for me at a very personal level. And I'm happy for the guy. I mean, he says he's able to save 500 pounds a month three weeks after he left Ghana to the UK. Well, Sami, if you're watching me back in Ghana, our savings are tired of saving us. Yeah? And most of us can't even save a peso or a month. But you, let's continue. You have healthcare workers earning 2,100 Ghana cities even after 11, no, 14 years of service as senior staff midwife. 2,400 Ghana cities so after 14 years. And in less than three weeks, someone is saving 500 pounds. I mean, in a month, he's saving almost like 5,000 Ghana cities. So the story is that many of our top, top healthcare workers are leaving for a brunetchi. So actually, when Bernard asked Samuel whether he will come back to Ghana to work now, in my head, I was like, hey, this is not a temptation. <laughs> but you see, some of you healthcare workers here in Ghana, you're always on your phone while at work and you know, some of the things you take for granted. You can't go and do that at the Bruno to Ghana and Ghana, you can do that. Now, I have heard, by the way, some of you are doing great and you deserve your whatever, right? I've heard wise men say that there is unity and strength. What I am now learning is that in hunger and poverty, the unity is stronger than appetite. <laughs> when you mark a script, a script, maybe a geography script or an economic script, the amount of money that you are giving is about 30 Ghana cities or 20 Ghana cities. If the headmaster of Presec, which is like the headmaster of a, a very prestigious public school, is paid less than 4,000 gross, if I'm a pupil teacher teaching in maybe a basic school, how much will I be earning? Yeah, okay. So let's say you are a graduate from the university 
and then you just entered into Ghana Education Service, your, pay, your salary will be around 1600 This unity of the unions seems a bit unprecedented for all four of you to meet at the same platform to declare strike at the same time. I haven't seen this in quite a while. Yeah, but that is what, that is what hunger and poverty does. Hunger and poverty brings people together very, very strongly. <laughs> no, that was Eric Aristotle, Shakespeare, Endo, Kabonu. Hey! Poverty also produces philosophers. That's why Africa, we talk plenty, we do little. <laughs> and, you know, hunger can make a man desperate. And a desperate man is full of promises. But when he is full, uh, and you remind him of his promises, he gets scandalized by the sound of his own promises. You get it? By this time, you don't get it? Anyway. So teacher unions are demanding 20% cost of living allowance COLA as, uh, you know, nurses. And in fact, the labor union in Ghana is piling pressure on the Akufado government. You people, let me warn you, you will do so. Then finance minister will introduce the Ghana case of Batampa COLA levy. You know, the Ghana case is not as annoying as the Batampa that they add to it, right? <laughs> See? For some time now, <laughs> I've been visiting the IMF Facebook page. I do that, I mean, lately. And when fuel prices hit me hard, I cry more than I go to the IMF page for some laughter. So let's go there. Let's go and read some, <laughs> some comments and relieve ourselves of some stress, okay? So um, there's this lady called Sandra Obua Enchiwa, all right? And she says... Uh, dear IMF, <laughs> if you have to give Ghana any money, come to our country and share it among us rather than give it to Akufuado. That man, oh, you can't say that man. Say his excellency. His excellency is enjoying in private jets while we suffer here. So, Sandra, how will the IMF share the money to more than 30 million people? Eh? Okay, so there's another guy. His name is Emil or something, Emil Weiss. And he has an answer, okay? So Emil says, Dear IMF, instead of giving the government of Ghana any money, consult the telcos and take our mobile money numbers and share to every Ghanaian as Momo or cash loan. At least we would understand we owe you directly. I pay you for money we have spent. What you don't know is that if they pay by a moment still, they will take it like the hell for that hard guy. <laughs> now, there's a lady called Ama Owusu Abuating. She, you know, I even memorized what she said. When you see a short, dark skin man coming inside your premises, that's the Ghanaian president. Ama, you can't do that. Is it our own show boy that you, you are painting like that? Short, dark skin man, pa. She continues to say, please. Don't open the door. <laughs> Wicked girl. You are mean. Now she goes on to say that she he's obnoxious. You know, you can't you can't say that. Obnoxious spendrift. Big, big English words. This sounds like recidivism or, or is it recidivism? Speaking big, big English without you know what I mean. You don't understand. Big wig, big bags, big bats, and little coins for the boys. Nine months, Charlie. <laughs> hey, don't do that. Pay the people and stop that. You know. And then she continues to say that obnoxious spendrift who has his priorities disarranged. He is spending millions on a cathedral no one supports. Ama Ousu Abuating. Who told you no one supports? My church, you have given almost one million or so. Anyway, let me not go further. Speaking of the cathedral, ladies and gentlemen, meet Oceani, Oceani Peter Opon Kruma, who swears me, don't me, he has never known of the Lord's plans concerning the cathedral. Hallelujah. Yeah. How do you justify the amounts we spent on a cathedral at the time we did? This whole cathedral matter, I think, has generated a lot of public um, bruhaha. I have honestly asked for a full brief to understand um, why we paid what at what point in time. So as I sit before you this morning, I don't have a full brief to enable me to uh, speak to that matter. 
Now, I don't know about you, but media, I, I, I believe Kojo, Oseoni Kojo, he knows absolutely nothing about the cathedral, even two years on. But what he knows, by the way, is the fact that the IMF, no, the Akufado IMF, no, this one, no, is not as a result of incompetence and mismanagement. We have not gone for a bailout. Because we've mismanaged the no, economy. No, we have not gone for a bailout because we've mismanaged the economy. We have gone for a bailout but because... But because you have. No, because no. all the data indicators from your debt-to-GDP levels, your inflation rate, your deficit rate, are worse than they were during Mohammed's time. So what induced them? That's the question we have to ask. So let me give you an answer. We are going for an IMF program because the twin crisis, first of COVID and now of Ukraine, have imposed an unprecedented demand on our fiscal and monetary policies to respond. Mm. Guys, if you sell gobe, I like how Bernard said, but Kojo, you have. If you sell gobe and your gobe is sweeter, who will say it? Your customers or you, Angasa? <laughs> you know, Kojo, people say your classmates elsewhere are resigning over small, small things, but you, dear. <laughs> You are doing Sergio Maguire, Casa Politics. <laughs> That's what they are saying. You. <laughs> After this break, <laughs> Dr. Baumia is asking a very important question. Stay. My people, welcome from that break. This is Backpage on City TV. My name is Caleb Kudasian. The IMF Facebook page now has one million followers, thanks to Ghanaians. They have acquired huge plots of land over there. But it's interesting what IMF says is the reason why nations visit them. See. Why might a country go into an economic or financial crisis? Perhaps it mismanaged its economic policies. Maybe global demand for its exports, say commodities, went down rapidly. Or it faced a natural disaster. As a result, the country is no longer able to pay its bills like debt payments or public sector salaries. What does the country do? The IMF was established more than 70 years ago precisely for this reason, to provide emergency financing and help countries stabilize their economies. Good. Now, Dr. Baumia, do you agree with this? This is why we got into the IMF. You were spending too much relative to revenues, which is true. You were borrowing too much, which is true. Your external payments position has deteriorated, which is true. And so you ended up your growth is reducing which is true so you ended up at the IMF and the IMF would impose certain conditions which is true and if you don't do certain things right you will get you will not the anchor will not hold okay according to Dr. Baumiana if your fundamentals are weak the exchange rate will expose you this he, he adds was true then and is true now so doc can we say the reasons we are going to the IMF, no, it was true then and it is true now? Because now they say it is some twin disaster and COVID-19, Russia, Ukraine, everything. But Doc, Dr. Baumia asked a very important question, which was important then and still is important now. Important. The question that you, you, you have to ask is if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana. How? <laughs> How? How does it happen? Amazing. Dr. Baumia, people say your class, again, again, your classmates elsewhere are resigning. But we, no, our leaders, no. In English, we have no shape. So we are no longer a proud nation. Contrary to what Ghana Kess or Batampa once said, we are a proud nation. You see, I applied in the year, yet baby, a homebrew penny. We are not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. The consequences are there. We are a proud nation. We have the resources. We have the capacity. Don't let anybody tell you. Like when Joshua Kalip and, go, and the 10 others went to spy on the promised land and only two of them came to say that we can do it and the ten went around the community murmuring you can't da 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 we are not people of short sight <laughs> i told you about this rising star of africa 
So, Eleven Minister Ken Furiata will be leading the IMF negotiation from the Ghana side. One of his party's men, Mark Osei-Sibe, he wants Ghanaians to know that from Oponkuma to Baumia to Showboy himself, just say, I'm not doing kind, Obiabwa, Obiabwa. If you put your house in order, you don't need the fund. So the U.S. is not running to the fund. Other countries are not running to the fund. So if your house is in order, maybe we thought our house was in order. That's why government spokespersons were saying that we don't need the IMF, uh, no matter what happens. But uh, reality has set in. But guys, sincerely, we're going to sit here for IMF people to come and tell our mighty president that he should suck a tadwa or what? Like, what at all does the president owe this young lady that she keeps pissing on everyone like that? A whole giant, giant, like Henry Quarte. He submitted himself even to the end to a probe uh, committee of absentee MPs. I understand he was absent because of health reasons. Now, Atadwa, she, you know, she won't come to Ghana. Zoom link and swap. She says, Ankamatiti. But, but has she become so untouchable? I told you a four more for you. I believe you. What will be sad is that the same thing Ghanaian experts in various fields have been telling this government to do now. They have been tagged professional German mayors and critics. No, IMF would now come with a cane and tell our government people to do the same thing and they will be peeing on themselves like a guinea fowl returning from Burkina Faso. Anyway, IMF, as for the private jets, TNN 2 and Penny 4 no say it's an addiction. Well, you know, once it's an addiction, it's an addiction. Dr. Mom, I remember. Hey, I said, Mom. <laughs> Dr. Balmia, hard guy. People say instead of resigning, you, know, you are coming to do more talking again in the hopes of breaking the eight. All the best. I look forward to it as always. Oh, oh, guys, lest I forget. Terminator, he was in Japan. Oh, my. I'm telling you. He went to find money for the construction of the Tema Motorway Runabout Phase 2. I understand it commences in September um, this year. Yeah. And the money is about 3.359 billion yen. Yeah. See, you know that uh, Kobe Bini, hmm? Yendi, we always have to go and beg for money. <laughs> we call it grant here, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Terminator, congratulations. Also, oh, oh, the road that goes to Ashesi University, you know, Terminator has signed a contract. It will start next month. Oh, say Terminator, five, four years old. <laughs> Terminator is so in the way. Anyway, before we go, I had many people tag me on my senior man's story of the impact, the impact of the teacher's strike. According to the people, this is the report. Enjoy. <laughs> of the over 30 teachers in the school, only one was present at the time we got here. For fear of being victimized by authorities, she refused to either be on camera or speak on tape. The school has a pupil population of 1,000. A majority of them reported to the school in the morning but had to leave due to the absence of the teachers at the school. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wow.